Okay, ready to draft your ground plan. Uh, I've put my paper down. Uh, I've used the equivalent of painter's tape. These are little art dots. Um, they usually don't pull your paper apart when you take them off. So if you've got some blue painter's tape at home, it's not a bad idea to tape your paper down. Um, if you've got just regular scotch tape, very small pieces so your paper doesn't rip apart. Now, before we actually start to draft, it's not a bad idea to clean your drafting equipment. So, you want to clean the edges and just make sure that, you know, whoever used it last when they were drawing didn't leave a lot of gunk build up on the edge of the straight edge from, you know, pencil. See, graphite, you know, pencil, that dust gets everywhere. You know, white paper, yeah, sliding your ruler across it will smudge your paper. So, that one's cleaner than I thought it would be. Uh, a couple other tools that we're going to use, and I've already cleaned these. Uh, this is a meter stick or yardstick. Uh, metal, wooden, doesn't matter. Uh, this is a T-square. Some of you may remember this from Tech 1. Um, if we built a model in your class, you use this to uh, cut foam core. Um, this one has never been used to run an X-Acto because I need the edges to stay parallel. Um, anything I do with the T-square, you can do with just the yardstick. Um, T-square speeds some things up. So I'll show, the, show you that in a moment. Okay, before we get ready to draft, we got to figure out some measurements. Uh, your proscenium for your stage is 44 feet wide. Uh, the depth of your stage is 32 feet. Uh, wings are 10 feet on each side. There is no apron. We've got a big piece of paper, um, so you have to figure out what scale you're going to use. Um, our paper is 24 inches wide. Okay. Um, so, you know, we know we can't do one inch to a foot because you're, that would mean you'd need a piece 44 plus inches wide. Uh, half inch, um, you know, that would be 22. So that's going to be really close, but that doesn't give you wing space. So we're going to use a scale of one quarter inch equals one foot, no inches. So like we did today in class with your measurements for your furniture, I need to convert all these real measurements into scaled measurements. So my proscenium is 44 feet in real life. In quarter inch scale, that means it's going to be 11 inches. Uh, the depth of my stage is 32 feet. So in scale, that's going to be 8 inches. My wings are 10 feet. So in scale, that's going to be 2 and a half. I'm old school. I still like fractions. Um, I don't have to worry about an apron. So this is kind of my cheat sheet to start with. Now, okay, so I have 11 plus 2.5 plus 2.5. I need to figure out how long that back wall of my theater is. So, zero, carry the one. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, I'm gonna draw a line 16 inches long. Okay, 24, because that's how wide my paper is, minus 16, <clears throat> you know, borrow. So I've got eight extra inches. So that means I'm going to start at, you know, eight inches. I'm going to put four inches on both sides. So I'm going to start at four and I'm going to end at 20. Okay. Put this aside for right now. Now, put my pen away because you don't want to ever draft in pen. I know I do in class sometimes, but that's so that you guys can see it on the paper at home because the... I don't always have a cameraman or one. So, my back wall. Remember, draftings eventually get a border. So, I want to give myself plenty of room from the edge of the paper. 
So I'm going to measure down two inches and make a mark. And it's just a tiny little dot. Remember, we want, when we draw the line, we want our dots to disappear underneath the line. So we don't want to, you know, we are not bubbling for the ACT or standardized test. Now you take your ruler and line it up with your two dots. Now, we don't think of 22 inches as being, or 24 inches as being hugely long. It is when you start to draw because of the force you're putting on the ruler. So, I'm going to start here at four. One straight, clean line. Now, as I've gotten over here, I want to move my hand because it'd be real easy to get my ruler to slide. And I stopped at 20. So, this is the back wall of my theater. Okay, that's pretty straightforward and simple. Okay. I need a center line and if I draw the center line now it's going to save me a couple of steps a little bit longer a little bit later on so go ahead and get that in place our paper is 24 inches wide so 12 make my little dot and come down here make sure my ruler's straight and make another dot at 12 now remember, center line is a dotted line. Dotted lines are reference lines and imaginary lines. Uh, we can locate them, but the audience typically doesn't see them. So, find my two little dots. And this particular line, a center line, has a pattern. It is a long dash and then a short dash. And I know that I've got to put a border on my paper and remember nothing touches the border so I'm gonna start my center line um, a little bit away from the edge of the paper so long line and then short line and then a long line and then a short line and a long line and a short line and a long line and a short line. And this pattern just goes down your paper. Long line, short line. 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 That should be far enough. Ooh, bummer. <clears throat> What you got to be really careful about. See how down here my center line has drifted. So I got off my mark uh, fairly substantially. So, uh, oh, well, rats. But that's why they created erasers. If you have a light hand when you're drafting and you make a mistake, it makes it a lot easier to erase. I have always been accused of pressing too hard when I draft. The drawing paper is fairly forgiving. But, you know, those lines are always going to be there. They're never going to completely go away. Just like the dirt on my uh, ruler or yardstick can smear, eraser, eraser shavings can smear and smudge as well. So, well, you know what? This would be a good point to show you what a T-square does. T-square, because of the head, the T, creates that second point. So, I line it up here, and now I just go back, long line, short line. Now 
and they don't have to match and be exact, but they should be similar. So there is my center line. Now, you label center lines, you can spell it all out, or a simple CL is fine. Now, okay, uh, the depth of my stage is 32 feet. In scale, that's eight inches. So, because my center line is there, I can now use that as a reference. I measure down on my center line and I make my mark. Uh, the paper's moving. Hopefully, I won't need my brush later. Okay. And this is where. Your T-square starts to save you time. If you make your dots large enough that you can see them after you get away from them. There it is. If you don't, you just go back and remeasure. Okay. Give yourself an approximate place to start. of my theater. Uh, let me do this one over here. It'll be easier for you guys to see uh, before I go over to the other side of the table. Oh, look, a little short. Not a big deal. My line didn't draw real well there at the top. Come over to this side. This is going to be the hard one for you to see because I'm kind of going to get in the way of the camera. Oh, a little short on this side too. Yep. And line up with the line that was already there and just cheat out these lines. Line. Even when I redrew it, didn't show up well. Okay, so here is my stage. Now, I need to know where my proscenium is. Okay, we know that the proscenium is 44 feet. <clears throat> In scale, that's 11 inches. So, my proscenium is going to go from thumb to thumb. Half of 11 is five and a half. So, I put five and a half on my center line. That's why I draw my center line early, because I can start to use it. So I make a mark at zero, and I make a mark at 11. <clears throat> now I'm gonna come over here, and you know, theaters are built out of bricks. So, we're going to go with the idea that the bricks making up our theater are a foot thick. And that's pretty close to accurate. So, I've made two marks. One foot from the edge of my line. So, this is the outside of my theater building. And now I'm going to draw the inside. Now, I'm going to be really smart here and fudge that just a little bit so it starts on a quarter. Now I have to be really careful not to move my T-square. Keep it nice and straight. So, 
I'm going to draw across, and I'm going to stop a quarter before I get to the other wall. Then come down here. We're going to do the same thing. You know, I can always lay another ruler, my short ruler, on top of my yardstick so that I can get that good T-square. Now, this one doesn't get drawn all the way across because it's the proscenium opening. Okay. Now, we've got the back wall, we've got our proscenium wall. We need to get the sides of our stage drawn in. See if I can do a better job drawing this line this time. Yeah, it just sounds better. Slide over to this side. Line up my yard, my rulers, and you know, I can do this just with a plain ruler too. I just have to hold it steady because the, those lines I drew are my two points. So there's the inside wall. Now, where's my proscenium? Well, we started to locate it. Now we just need to draw it in. Remember, it is the front wall of the proscenium is 10 feet. So, you know, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So, I've got my mark right there. I can slide this up, make another mark because I've got those two points. You're, yeah. Two points determine my line. And as I said, that's why there are erasers. And I did a better job on this side by not giving myself too much to have to erase. Okay. Laying my ruler in here. I can use this as a shield so I don't erase line that I still need. So I just erase right up to the ruler, but the ruler's not going to let me erase anything under it. So as long as I don't move it, I'm good. Now, this side for me is a little bit harder because I'm right-handed. Here's my proscenium wall, here's my theater, here's my stage. Now, it's not a bad idea to draw in your wings. So I've gotten a really thin um, mechanical pencil so that it'll mostly disappear. See, it's a real thin line. And that's what I want. I don't want this to be a big distracting line. This is just more for my reference so that I know where my wings start. Okay, so those are my two wing lines. Now, we talked about sight lines a couple weeks ago. And we've got to locate our sight lines on this theater. So, the first... The furthest exterior chair on both sides is four feet wider than the proscenium. So, I just measure over one inch. I'm just going to make a little mark because I'm going to, you know, the chair is not going to touch the proscenium. Uh, but I need to know where it is on the proscenium. Okay, so I've got my two marks. Now, chairs, um, 
In our theater, we've got a whole bunch of open floor space, uh, and that's so that we can put chairs out for the orchestra, because we don't have an orchestra pit. Uh, most professional theaters, those chairs are going to be really close to the stage. So, we're going to measure down uh, four feet on my center line and make a mark. only have a single mark, I am going to pull the T-square back out. Because I'm going to end up using the T-square and my ruler. So I want to check this. So four feet, remember in, in quarter inch scale, four feet is an inch. So, you know, nine's on my proscenium, the front edge of my stage. And my T-square is on, you know, one inch away. I bring this over here, and I'm using this as a straight edge so that I know where my chair is. Now, and I'm just going to make a little L, because that way I won't get distracted and think that it's a dot, but I'll remember that it has some importance. Okay, so these are my two furthest chairs. This is where the the T square isn't super helpful, so we'll lay that aside. Uh, we're probably done with the ruler as well. Okay, so Now I've got my two points. One point is this corner of the proscenium, and the other point is the apex of that angle. <clears throat> you know, I really don't like that angle. So, we're gonna move that chair back a little further. So this becomes easier for us when we're doing our set design. Remember, not a mistake until you won't fix it. So let's measure down. It's because I put the ruler away. I wasn't done with it. Let's measure down two feet. So, just like before, here's my mark on the proscenium. And, you know, in a well-designed theater, your sight line shouldn't cross the center line. And my earlier sight line was crossing that center line. And that was going to make your guy's life really difficult. Now, are there theaters that are really small where the sight lines are weird? Yes. We used to be at one. It was called Fuquay High School. Because the theater wasn't designed to be a theater. It was built to be a lecture hall. Okay. Huh. That paper's sliding around again. Line that back up. Stick your tape back down. Okay. Now, ah, oh yeah, this is better. So, you know, this is the center of my patron. You know, that's the middle of his or her head. And again, you know, this is not a line that the audience is going to see. So, I'm going to draw it really lightly. Okay, and there's my sight line for that side of the stage. 
And if I've measured accurately, my sight lines should be symmetrical. I'm gonna have to stand up for this one. Because that ruler is gonna wanna move. Okay, so there are my two sight lines. Uh, I'm a little off. My first sight line is about three fourths of an inch, and my second sight line is over mm, fairly dramatically. So, okay. Now, this is where you want to get to by next class period. <clears throat> Remember, since we're all virtual, um, yeah. those of you who are in the new cohort I'll see Monday, you should bring your drafting with you to school. Um, now, that's in addition, everybody is going to take a picture of their drafting and upload it to the Google Classroom. Now, uh, I'm going to put a blank Google Slideshow out there for you to post your picture on the Google Slideshow. Uh, we discovered with the last ones, with your rough sketches, um, something has changed in Google Classroom. Last semester I could make notes on photographs and you all would see them. This semester that has disappeared. So we're going to fix that by dropping them onto a slide. Make the photo as large as you can on the slide. You know, don't worry that it's not symmetrical. You're going to have more space on the right and the left of the slide. Uh, but make it you know, as tall as you can. Don't hang it off the slide. But I want to see, I really want to see all of the paper from top to bottom. Uh, and make sure that I've got the sides of the theater. If I lose some of this paper out here over the, this drawing and our next drawing, not a big deal. Uh, when we get to the third one where you have to put the border and the title block in here, yeah, then I need all of the paper. Okay? So, tomorrow in class, uh, well, actually, today in class, because you'll watch this afterwards, I'll demo this again, and you'll see me do it live, and then you can work with the Ed Puzzle, and it'll start and stop after each one. Okay? Hope things go well this weekend, and I'll see you all on, should be Monday. Have a good weekend.